imagine a computer that's as easy to interact with as a person. TLDR, the open source hardware device, this one. This is called the O1 Lite. Same team that made Open Interpreter. Push a button and you can speak into it and it sends your audio into a server. Normally your own laptop, it seems. That's what it's kind of initially designed for. So they have their own MacBook um, acting as a server and you kind of tell it to do whatever you want and it kind of uses your computer remotely. Okay, here they go outside. By the way, you've just received an email from Mike asking about your progress on an article. Would you like to respond to it now? So I need to send that file to Mike, but it's on my computer at home. Hey, that article should be on my desktop. It's called the Universal Interface. There's a file titled the Universal Interface.pdf on your desktop. Do you want me to send it to Mike? Now, at this point, I could ask my light to read or even edit that document, but I'm just gonna send it to Mike. Okay, and then the most interesting thing is them teaching it a skill. So now Killian goes back to their computer and they... Out of the box, it's pretty good at using my computer, but it can't do everything. So let's teach it to use a desktop application that it's never seen. I'm gonna show you how to send a Slack message. Hit Command K. Done, did I do that correctly? Yeah, that worked. Okay, now type out the name of the recipient, like for example, Ty, then press enter. Any desktop application or even a pipeline of applications and websites without setting up any authentication. It just uses your computer, but here's where it gets interesting. Okay, now I want you to monitor my email. If you get any invoices, could you take a look at the attachments and then slack all the relevant details to Mike? Oh yeah, that's also another new thing that we haven't really seen from many other agents is like the monitoring service of email or other. All right, I'll monitor your inbox for invoices. Now, days later, when I get an invoice, which I'll test just by emailing one of myself, it will Slack it to Mike and let me know about it. Now it's using Slack, it's open Slack. I just um, sent a Slack message to Mike with the basic information of the invoice. It's completely open source, so you can make your own O1, or you can buy their pre-order. It's pretty cheap as well. It's like 99 or 100 US dollars, uh, or 99 dollars plus 10 dollars shipping. Yeah, you can just run the server on your Mac without the hardware device and just talk straight to the computer. For I'd ask per year, no, just for the hardware, it's a hundred dollars one-off fee. I don't think there's any subscription. You can just run it directly to your own computer, or you know, you have have an LLM like GPT-4 you pay a subscription for as well, or you go to host a computer that you can use. I think that's the go. Like it is kind of slightly dangerous to let an AI like this use your actual computer that you use. So maybe having like a VM or something is the go. Anyway, I have my laptop plugged in here and we're gonna try install this thing and see how it works, if it works. I know it's very early days, so I don't think everything they showed in the demo will work today, but um, we'll see how far we can get. Wish me luck. All right, so this is the URL, GitHub Open Interpreter 01, and we're just gonna clone the repository and run the things. CD into the software and install port audio FFmpeg and CMake. I already have FFmpeg at the least. Probably have CMake, I'm not sure about port audio though. Nice, all right, so we've installed the prerequisites. I'm not sure if it's all the prerequisites. Yep, and now we install the Python project with poetry, all the dependencies. JW says, I'm not an Apple user I've started to use Arch Linux. Yeah, so they've started with this on Apple, but there's no reason that it can't be on, that it can't be on Windows or Linux. Uh, it's all open source, so I'm sure they'll have the Windows and Linux port soon. Poetry run 01. Press spacebar to start, stop recording. Oh, we've got to allow microphone. Oop, recording stopped. I think we've got to hold spacebar. Let's, let's ask it to open Chrome. Open Chrome. Open Chrome. That is what I said. All right, I'll open Chrome for you. All right, I'll open Chrome for you. Oh, the voice is so nice. Okay, it opened Chrome. Google Chrome is now open. I'm gonna say, what should we get it to do? I'd be like, go to the GitHub project of open-interpreter slash 01 and then go to the software folder and give me a brief description of what the readme says. Okay, that's quite a long prompt. Let's see. Open Vim and quit it. That's funny. I feel like I'm giving it quite detailed prompts. Maybe too much detail. Okay, I will navigate to the desired location. Oh, got an error. Browser has no attribute open. Apologies prompt. for the interruption. 
Let me correct that. I will first bring up the GitHub project page on the Chrome browser. Oh shit, so now it's going a different way. find the software folder, then read the contents of that readme file to provide a summary. We've arrived at the GitHub page for the OpenInterpreter-01 project. Now let's find the software folder. All right, I will continue navigating to the software folder. Let's go. Uh, it's having it trouble seems that the clicking. term Open Interpreter 01 was found in multiple locations. Oh, you see the mouse move? I will move? select the most suitable one for this uh, context. Oh, click the tab. That's the wrong one. Yo, Farouk, what's up? We're, we're testing out the 01 software for Open Interpreter. Oh. Apologies again for the confusion. I'll retry navigating. This is going to be Let costing me, me a lot of money. And get the correct text to click. All right, all right. I will carry on with searching for the software folder. Hmm, I'm gonna close Let me this. try another method. Thank you for your patience. Yeah, so obviously it's still a bit buggy, but um, I think you guys see where this is going. So it's like you can talk to your computer without being at your computer if I had the hardware device. Or the thing is it's open source, so I don't even need that particular hardware device. I could make my own like Android app, I could make my own whatever interface I want, gla smart glasses, anything to interface with this computer through this software that they've made through this. Um, so, but yeah, as you can see, it's still in very early development. But just the fact that it's completely open source means we have the whole community working on this. And that's really, really, really awesome. Um, and while we're on the topic of Open Interpreter 01, they did have a launch party a day or two ago. Yeah, let me show you some videos, exclusive tech friend scoop. Yeah, so nice. I Killian mean, like read out everyone's idea. comments on Discord. They're also with Ty. Ty is here. This is Mike. These are some core developers on the team. Oh, we were talking um, about like potential form factors, hardware device, and like people were saying a ring. Like a necklace and stuff. Was like a payphone? Oh yeah, but they the, said, the that what if there was a service where you could call a number and then through that number, you interface with your computer. Sounds like a massive security risk, but still pretty cool. <laughs> that you beam to it is actually by just calling a number. Killing, hoping to test the O1 for accommodation for students with disabilities. OS mode for accessibility is so good. Like people that are either slow at using the computer or don't know how to type or use a mouse. Like just being able to talk to it is like, a game changer. Can, the idea of this thing as an accessibility tool that makes all bad design and inaccessible design into good design, because it's just operating a computer under the hood and handling that that pipe for you, that translation. Leo asks, am I gonna buy the O1 device? No, not at this stage. Who knows when they're gonna ship it? Plus I could just build one myself with the parts. And also I think the, the best use case for me is actually my phone. I'd rather just be able to talk into my phone than have a separate device. Although I do like having a small separate device technically, but um, I don't know. I'm just not that interested into the hardware rather than I am the software. This We said this on the first meeting. The like, mobile app for O1? You know, whether or not yeah, well, Leo, that's the thing. Should it be a mobile app? I want it to be integrated with Google Assistant. What, you know, you can make an app and yeah, it'll be easy to send a voice through the app. That's fine. Personally, I want to be able to talk to it without having to unlock my phone and open an app. That would be awesome. So if I can get it to work with like Google Assistant, which has the wait on command, or if there was some way to have like a button you can press to talk to it, that would be awesome. Toprak says, what really is O1 at this point? Text-to-speech and speech-to-text, what other capabilities can we use without the hardware? Yeah, it's the, the, the biggest one is its ability to navigate the whole computer user interface. That's the biggest one. So we can use any app on the computer, Slack, Chrome, Notepad, Doc, Excel, whatever. Theoretically, it should be able to, you tell it, it's like having like a nerd sitting at your computer that you can call up and be like, yo nerd, make me this uh, app right now. Or yo nerd, take all my invoices from my email and like, you know, make a spreadsheet and do this. You know what I mean? That's the, that's the big appeal. No offense to, People that identify as nerds, I do myself. So, you know, a bit of friendly fire there. Yep. 
Is it using Open Interpreter or a different kind of software? Yeah, it is. They have a diagram. This. There's hardware on the outside, that's the O1. On the inside there's Interpreter, which runs a code in your operating system, and then the Interpreter uses LLM. Speech comes in through the hardware, into the OS, into the Interpreter, the LLM processes it, there's code that's run into the OS, and then takes the speech back out into the hardware. Beautiful diagram. If it's the same old open interpreter, we know it has limitations. Yeah, for sure. But every day with the open source community, you know, it gets better. It's only been out for, you know, not too long. So give it a couple years and it'll be so capable. Because look how many people have been working on it. The contributions, 87. 87 people have contributed to this project. That's like a whole company. Look who's number 16. AJ47, tech friend. There's your boy, beauting, only change of the docs, but you know, it still counts. Do we have a timeline for the desktop app? Yeah, actually, I think that we want to time it with, with uh, the consumer release or earlier. 100%, the consumer launch, you shouldn't need to be dealing with your ter terminal. 100% no, it's it's going to be an application. Just like the second tweet was like, all right, what should we call this? And a bunch of people were like, Wabbit, how do you get this thing running on a seed sense? Because those things you can buy for, from Amazon for like 20 bucks and they have a camera. Um, and so the idea of what is what is a version of this thing that have as a camera look like? And we actually, we tested it with the one that is uh, fully simulated. So Tom built a camera. That's super important to expose cleanly and, and properly in the near future. I have the meta glasses. And if we got the brilliant lab, glasses this is open source as well so we could link this but this has a camera and a let's accelerate together i'll see you there